This video is sponsored by Artgrid.io. Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Ines Alea, and in today's video, we're going to turn this city into a sci-fi futuristic city just like this. <laughs> All right, so you know what's up for today. It's quite exciting. I work really long on the shot. So unfortunately, I won't be doing an in-depth tutorial, but more like a run through on everything that I've done in order to create this entire video. Although I will give you enough tips and tricks to do it yourself. And also with other tutorials that you might find on the channel, you will definitely know what to do. All right, so I'm going to be completely honest with you. This video is a little bit inspired by, well, first of all, my incredible obsession with sci-fi and futuristic looking cities. The other point is that it's also inspired Inspired by Ghost in the Shell, really awesome movie that's just full of stunning visual effects. And then I thought I should make one myself and show it to the audience. So here we are, this is the shot that I've created. Obviously we already have a great start with the footage that I'm using. It's an amazing footage that runs through the city and it's actually from artgrid.io. So they offer Hollywood level stock footage at an incredible price and it's actually in their subscription model. So that's the craziest thing about stock footage because stock footage can really become a very big expense. And I haven't found a website with this kind of quality with a monthly subscription. So you don't have to think about each different shot that you're going to be downloading whether or not you should download it maybe in the end you don't end up using it so you can just download everything that you want or need on our website if you have their subscription you have four types of plans especially the creator one is very interesting and I mean for that amount if you're going to be using a ton of clips in your videos as b-roll to make it more interesting to make it look more professional or if you work with clients this is just the place to be in my opinion so definitely go and check out artgrid.io with the link in the description below you'll know what's up <laughs> So the first thing, of course, what I've done, I've actually downloaded this 6K footage, which is crazy. And I don't know why I actually imported 6K because that really took me a lot more time to work on this project. I should have downgraded it. But anyway, uh, so I imported that in Adobe After Effects and then I 3D tracked it. So from here, you want to think of the building that you want to work on and zoom onto that building. Make sure that your video footage and the 3D camera tracker effect is selected in order to see those tracking points. Select a few points and then right click, and create a new solid and camera. Here you can actually use this 3D solid as a reference point where you can import other elements and put it at the exact same location as that solid layer or you can basically stretch that solid layer as I've done in this shot and then mask out this kind of scripture here and I just keyed out all the letters here separately. Then I also duplicated my solid layer to different layers uh, just so I have each letter on a different layer. So uh, we have the solid layer. I will move this to the side to look like a little bit of a hologram. And then also what I've done is I played with the wiggle for the letter. So on each letter, I actually went to the opacity for the letter and I alt clicked on the stopwatch and I wrote a simple expression with the wiggle, but it doesn't flicker really realistically because a flicker really has that kind of stutter to it. So then I added the posterize time effect and I set it to an amount of eight or something and that makes it uh, kind of lag a little bit more uh, while it's wiggling. I have a tutorial on that. I will add a cards on this video video so you can go and check that out if you are interested in that. Once I have all the letters separate, I actually duplicated my camera, I selected the camera and my four letters and I pre-composed them so they also have the 3D information in the pre-composition. Then I also added a solid composite, made it black, that way everything around the letters is black and we can use a transparency mode but I actually use this solid composite technique if I'm going to be adding glow on it because glow doesn't really apply well to transparent elements so if you have something with a transparent kind of size to it, it doesn't really uh, work that well. So it's always good to give it a black background and then set the blending mode to a screen or an ad. So then I added the perfect glow preset, which you can download for free on our website. A link will be in the description below. It's one of our befamed presets, uh, which you can use. And that just makes the glow a little bit more intense and richer. I also graded my shot a little bit with the exposure tag. Uh, to make it a little bit darker. And also with the curves, I kind of uh, pulled down on the whites. The reason why I made my shot a little bit darker is because glows are going to look the best in night shots or darker type of shots. So then I will move to a next building again, search for those tracking points because now we're in a different kind of depth of space. So each building has its own position, let's say in 3D space. So select your different building where you wanna add something. And then again, select those points and make again a solid layer or 
a null and we're basically going to be using the position of the solid we created to uh, apply to other things. So I actually duplicated the letters again and I flipped them over just because I didn't want to create something new, a little bit lazy of me, I know. Uh, and then I positioned them on that position of uh, the building. Again, I added these glow effects, I changed the color a little bit and just play around. And I'm also going to be importing our HUD element pack uh, that we created. It's basically a very big pack of plenty of awesome sci-fi HUD elements, which I also use in the Iron Man helmet tutorial, basically because they look futuristic, they're already made, and now I can go and start placing them all over my city to make my city look very futuristic. Again, by selecting these points, making a null or a solid, and then placing uh, the elements I want in the right location. I tried to make a kind of hologram tunnel. Then I also have this bridge and the holograms are actually coming in front of it. And I actually want this bridge to cover uh, those holograms. So what I've done here is I choose the tracking points for the bridge and I made a solid there. Then I uncheck that solid and I messed around my bridge. And I'm going to change this to an alpha inverted mat and that way they don't show where the bridge is and it seems like they're in depth behind the bridge. If you're familiar with my videos you should definitely have come across techniques that I'm using in this video. So keep on doing that until you're satisfied with the HUD elements. Now we can continue on to something else. So next I wanted to add some advertisement to the buildings, some kind of hologram videos that are projected on the buildings or something like that. So I searched for some clips. Again, I used artgrid.io to search for clips because I don't have to pay for each individual clip. Unlimited downloads. <laughs> I went to artgrid.io and I searched for a dancing couple. I searched for, um, uh, we have, um, how are they called? <laughs> totally forgot. How are those things called? Come on, you have jellyfish. Is it jelly? Yeah. I found a parrot on a green screen, which, which was uh, really useful. So I can use these videos because they're actually moving on the video uh, and I can actually trick them into the shot. So make sure that with the jellyfish, for example, we have a black background. Uh, with the parrot, we have a green uh, background. So either you have some very solid distinguishable background or you won't be able to do this or you really have to rotoscope. And I mean, I'm re really not in the mood for that. Or you could use 3D models, but I wanted to show you that it's possible with just video files and also with 3D models. So we used both techniques in this video. So for this dancing couple, again, I chose the solid, uh, well, I chose chose the points, the tracking points on this building, I placed them on those tracking points and then I played a little bit with the settings to make it look however I want. I also created a pattern of little balls by just creating a new composition and adding a new solid with a CC ball action effect to it. That way it looks more like a hologram and then I just place this above the videos that I want to give that look and I put it in the same position and then I use these balls as a luma mat for the video so we only see like little dots of that video so it looks a little bit more like a hologram. Sometimes I also use uh, some parts of our background pack where we have these kind of scanning lines uh, that I'm also using as a luma mat uh, and that way we have some variation in there so really try to make your video look like it's a hologram that's also a great trick I also added chromatic aberration to some of my videos and I also added solid layers to give some glow and etc so then I started with the jellyfish, as you can see right here, I changed the blending mode to an additive and then I played again with all these settings, adding a glow to make it look like a hologram and then I duplicated my jellyfish, put them in 3D position, make them bigger, smaller, offset the time, rotate them a little bit to give a little bit of variation, make it look like they're different jellyfish. So I'm going to do the same thing for the parrot. I'm going to key it with key light and then I'm going to place it on top of the building, play with the opacity, uh, play with the glow, make it again look like a hologram. And I also keyed out this building just to make sure it's behind the building or on top of the building at least. 
And then another cool thing that I've done is I actually went to Mixamo. I'm not sure if you know Mixamo, but Mixamo allows you to browse through characters and animations, and you can even upload your own characters if you have a 3D character. So you upload it there, automatically it's going to rig your character, and then you can browse through animations, and it will do the animation that you just click. You don't have to animate, you don't have to know anything. It's basically an animator in the browser automatically crazy once you like the animation once you like the character you just download it and then you import it in your 3d software and it's going to be animated in the 3d software so right here i exported my after effects project file to cinema 4d as you can see we still have all these solid layers obviously we don't need them so i'm going to uh, just disable these later on but now i'm going to import my background just so i can see some reference in this uh, cinema 4d and now I'm going to import the character that we got from Mixamo. So we have this dancing girl, really futuristic in my opinion. I'm going to import her and just place her in a location there around the bridge, I think, make her bigger and then make sure she's tracked well. You can also add some more text and place it to other locations. I was really doubting to add like a McDonald's logo <laughs> in this video because every video that is some kind of futuristic hologram city has a hologram M for McDonald's in it, uh, well, the kind of arcs. Uh, so that's always in there. So I was like, maybe I should, but I didn't, I don't know. So I played a little bit with the text. Uh, in the end, I didn't end up using it uh, because I thought I had enough in my city, but you can definitely uh, add a ton of 3D elements. And I think 3D elements really add up into making it look realistic. So then I also went online and I found a free Tesla model. It's like the most futuristic vehicle that we can think of right now. So, um, and I'm a really big fan of it. I don't know why, but it's just, it has something, you know, has something unique. And so I found them, that 3D model. I textured it using Octane, but I wanted to make it fly. So I also modeled some kind of um, exhausts. Um, I deleted the wheels and instead of wheels, I added something uh, to make it fly. So I tried a few different things and I ended up getting something like this. And then I'm just going to um, place my vehicle also closer to the building just to get an idea of how big it should look towards that building so it's pretty small. Then I'm going to animate it, uh, fly from behind the camera and then move it forward just uh, with some position keyframing. And then I also played with the timeline to make it a little bit smoother, rotate it a little bit. And I also added a vibrate tag to my vehicle uh, to make it vibrate a little bit. So the vibrate tag is also some kind of wiggle for Cinema 4D where we have a vehicle and then slowly it's going to give a little bit of a shake to it and it's just going to make it look more realistic when it's flying and once it was exported I just dragged it on top of my video in Adobe After Effects and just stacked it up there I also added the RSMB uh, plugin just to give a realistic motion blur and then we have our final shot voila all right, so this was kind of a run through on the techniques that I have been using. It wasn't in that, but at least I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, give this video a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more. I'm so happy that we made it to the end and hopefully I can see you in the next one. And until next time, create epic videos.